6.3 is a little bit different than what we've been seeing in class so far. In this tutorial, we're going to go over Pascal's triangle and also how Pascal's triangle relates to binomial expansion, also known as binomial theorem. So in front of you right now, you see this nice, beautiful, colorful picture of the Pascal's triangle. Now, if you're not given Pascal's triangle, it's really easy to recreate. Notice that every row starts with the one and ends with the one. Okay, so even this first one, uh, which we don't call row one, we actually call it row zero, um, that starts and technically ends with the one. In row number one, you start with an one and then you end with the one. Even in row number two, you start with the one and you end with the one. But what's really weird is that you have this number in the middle. That was different than before. Where did that come from? Well, that came from the two numbers above it adding together. So now you're starting to see how the triangle is formed. Okay, so start with a one, add the two numbers above to get the number below. Add those two numbers above to get the one below and then end with the one. So why don't we try one more time? Start with the one, add these two numbers to get the six, these two to get the 15, these two to get the 20, and I think you're starting to get the point end with a one. This triangle goes on and on forever. I mean if you're willing to sit there and you're willing to add up all these numbers you're gonna get a huge triangle. Okay but how does it relate to binomial expansion or theorem? Okay if you had a question such as this, okay what you're gonna do is expand and simplify. Well we've seen this type of question before and we know that a binomial, first of all, is two terms added or subtracted together. And then we have three of them because it's to the power of three. So I'm just going to do this very quickly. We have three of these guys multiplied together. Okay, and I'm just going to do FOIL. Whoops, well, anyways. X squared minus 4X. 4x plus 16, okay, and then we're going to multiply that with that last binomial, and maybe I'll probably simplify first. So I get a trinomial multiplying a binomial, and we do that by doing distributive law. Okay, so I'm going to multiply this x into everything first, and then I'll multiply that 4 into everything excuse me, negative 4. Okay, last step is to simplify. So I have x cubed, negative 12x squares, 48x, and a negative 64. That didn't really take me too much time. It, it was quite a couple steps, I mean five steps. But that's because the power was very low. If they had given you, say, to the power of 7, are you really going to sit there and multiply that binomial seven times? It's just, it's so much work that I probably would either give up or I would make a huge mistake somewhere in the middle that would just perpetuate as I went down. So there must be an easier way and that's where the Pascal's triangle comes in. I'm going to show you a different way and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write this answer right up in the corner so that I can compare and show you that I will get the exact same answer afterwards. Okay, so let's get rid of all oh, my beautiful work. Okay, this power right here tells you which row to look at. Okay, so remember this is row zero, so this must be one, two, and row three. I'm going to take all these numbers and they're going to be my coefficients. Okay, so it was one, three, three, one. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the first term in the binomial, that's this guy right here, and I'm going to write that in brackets beside each of those coefficients. I really like to color code this because it just makes it easier to see. Now this exponent, I'm going to start off with here and I'm going to go in descending order. Usually you end with zero. Okay, next I'm going to take my next term, which is the negative four, and remember to put brackets around that as well. Okay, I'm going to take my exponent again, but I'm not going to go in 
descending order, I'm actually going to go in ascending order starting from zero. So I should be ending off with that three. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my equal sign and pluses in the middle of each of these to show you that this is one term. That's going to be my next term. Another term and then the last term. Okay, so let's start simplifying. The one doesn't change. We have an x cubed. Negative 4 to the power of 0 is positive 1. Remember that negative is also to the power of 0. Plus 3 x squared. Negative 4 is still in brackets. three x and then that's going to be a positive 16 again because the negative is being squared as well and then one x to the power of zero is one and then we have negative 64 in brackets okay now your last step is just to put everything together 1 times 1 times x cubed is x cubed. Positive 3 times negative 4 is going to give you a negative 12, and then the x squared. Then we have positive 3 times 16, so positive 48x. And 1 times 1 times negative 64 is negative 64. Notice that it is exactly as I got before. So this is much easier because I, I only did it in three steps instead of, what was it, 5 before? Okay, let's try it one more time, and uh, you know what, since we know how to do it now, why don't we up the power, and then in fact, we will up the numbers as well, make even bigger numbers. Okay, so what I've done is I've provided that entire first step, just because it takes a long time to write out, and I don't want to make the video way too long, so here we go. I'm going to explain how I got all of that. So there's that exponent 5, that means I'm looking at my Pascal's triangle to the fifth row, and I need all of these as my coefficients. Okay, so going back down, here's the 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, and 1. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the first term of the binomial right next to it in brackets. And notice that it's descending in exponents starting with the 5, because that's the 5, and going all the way down to 0. Okay, then what I have is I have that positive 5, which is the second um, term in the binomial. I have that right beside the green. And this time we're going to go ascending in exponent all the way up to 5. Okay, so my next two steps are simplifying and then putting everything together. So 1, 2x to the power of 5 is 32x5. So don't forget to do 2 to the power of 5 as well. A lot of people tend to forget that. 5 to the power of 0 is 1. And we have the next term. So 5, 2x to the power of 4 is 16x. And then I have 5 to the power of 1. Okay, and 8x cubed, 25, plus our next term, 10, and that was 4x squared times 125 plus and then I'll just write a little bit below it we got the 5 2x and 625 and then the very last term 1 2x to the power of 0 is just 1 and that's 3 1,125. Okay, last step, putting everything together now. 1 times 32 times 1 is 32. 
x to the 5. Plus, I'm going to need a calculator. 5 times 16 times 5, you get 400x4. Then 10 times 8 times 25, 2000x3. So this would have taken me a really long time if I had done it the long way. And it probably would have made a mistake. Okay, 5 times 2 times 625, 6250x. And then the last term is 3125. So there you go. That's using the Pascal's triangle for binomial expansion.